Ah, I think I'm in frame. Yo, what's up guys? It's Justice and we're tending the new Toyota Highlander today. So let's get it. <laughs> um, so I want to walk around this car real quick because this is the new um, Highlander Tesla and just look at some things that are different. For tint wise, so I'm going to be only looking at Windows related things so it might be boring to everybody else. Uh, what I've noticed, these are shaped different, which that literally doesn't matter to anybody else but me. Um, it's not even a big deal, it's just a different shape. I noticed uh, the sunroof looks like it has a lot more aggressive curve than it did on the other Model 3s. The doors are the exact same, so, and then the back window looks to be the exact same as before. One cool thing that I noticed, and I'm sure you can see me on camera in here, is so on the other Teslas, they have like a white, um, they either have like the wood grain or like a white trim piece here. And now we've gone to the fabric. I like that because I honestly thought the wood grain was hideous and so ugly. And the white was cool, but the problem with the white is whenever you tint the doors really dark, you'll actually get like um, some re reflectivity because of it, because of the light bouncing back off of it. And it'll make it hard to see out the mirrors. I've had people complain about that with really dark film. So I like that they switched it up to the fabric because that's going to, especially like, I don't know if it's going to, they're all going to have the same darker trim, but this darker fabric is going to definitely help with that. Uh, the lighting around is pretty cool. It's got the little like swipe thing to put it in driver reverse, like on the screen, like the Model X's, the Cybertrucks, the Model S's. Uh, headlights I noticed are different. One other thing in the back, which you're not going to see this because the camera's fixed because Alex left me alone is uh, it says Tesla back here. And I always thought the, re the, the letters of Tesla look so much more like so much cleaner than the T's. I'm not a big fan of just the T's. I'm honestly with cars. I want to debadge them. I want to black them all out. I want black, black on black on everything. And it looks awesome. So yeah, let's go going with the tint. Ah! <laughs> all right, everybody, you're stuck with me this whole time. I'm mic'd up, so I'm stuck to my own devices now, so I'm going to be talking a whole lot. Because normally, I'd be listening to like a podcast or some gangster rap, and uh, here I am, not. <laughs> so I have to keep myself entertained and y'all like coming along for the ride. If y'all are curious about what I listen to throughout the day, I love sports. So I'm a big soccer fan, and I like football a lot. Football season's over, but I usually listen to a whole lot of stuff. I'm a big Cowboys fan. So, ooh, this glass is thinner. It's still, it's still the same shape though. Um, but yeah, I'm a big Cowboys fan. And so I listen to a lot of like sports stuff, especially during the season. So like, we already know I have bad taste in sports teams, but it is what it is. I also listen to a lot of true crime podcasts and I love science podcasts. So I listen to like Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, his Star Talk part the podcast like every day. That stuff is amazing. The man is a genius and so good at like explaining like complicated things to us simpletons and it's super fun to listen to. I don't know if Alex is going to cut all this out, but I don't even know which way to stand to get this more in frame. But so I'm doing this left handed just so the camera can see me better. But we're shrinking the window first, like always. Typical stuff. I use the, uh, the old patterns because these windows look to be like the exact same shape. I always make it a habit to um, extend the patterns because I don't like having gaps at the top of my windows or around the edges, especially on open frame windows. So I file everything and the patterns in the cutting system always cut everything just a hair small to go with like what we consider industry standard and industry standard leaves like a 16th of an inch gap which for most places that's okay, but for us, we make such a big deal about our quality that that's not good enough. So I always extend everything up so I can uh, adjust it on my own. So there still should be plenty of space with these extended windows for everything to fit right. So I feel like I should also say what we're doing on this car today. So today we're just hitting the, the sides and back window. We're not doing the windshield or the sunroof today. I'm sure they'll come back later and want to get it done. But as of right now, we're just doing the sides and back. Uh, we're doing 20% crystalline on it. So it's going to give it a little bit of a darker look. 20% is the darkest crystalline comes in, which I have a preference for really dark windows. I always say the darker the better, but that's just me because your eyes adjust to light if you're concerned about really dark tint. 
uh, whenever you're inside the car, your eyes automatically adjust to it. So it's like something to me that's not even noticeable. I have a very dark tinted Jeep. <laughs> and as always, we're covering and protecting the door panels. The reason I do the back window first is there's like, sometimes little fingers will pull up as I'm done. Even though it's like fully shrunk, everything's installed, the film will have like at high tension points, the film will just be not wanting to lay down. And especially whenever it's wet, it's gonna try to pull up. So if I do the back window first, and then I do all the doors, by the time I file and come back around, it's usually been an hour or so. And then there's like, it's just, it's starting to dry a little bit better. So everything just wants to lay down then. I can always add heat to like act as a catalyst to like speed up the like drying process so it starts to tack a little bit faster. But if you get it too hot, you're on the risk of creasing the film. There's a lot of other stuff. It's just easier for it to like dry naturally. And I call this technique air peeling if anybody was curious. A lot of people use the peel boards to peel, but I feel like the peel board, you just walk through so much air contaminants before you get to the film. And here, I'm literally like 12, 18 inches away from the window. So in my mind, there's less chance for contaminants in that short amount of space versus, you know, a larger amount of space. But that actually continues on to what I was talking about earlier is, uh, so the, like, anytime, like, when you look at like a sunray and you see all the little specks floating, all those are potential contaminants for me. That's just dirt and debris that's floating around in the air. And anytime the adhesive or the final glass is exposed to the air, there's a like possibility for some type of contaminant to get up underneath it. And once it does, it'll seal like the moisture and air around it, causing like a little pocket to form. And that air pocket will end up drying white. And so whenever you first install it, you don't really notice it as much, but as the film dries, it'll create like a little white ring around the piece of debris. Something that we can't see with our naked eye just sitting on our hand. But when it has that little air ring around it, it makes it look like it's huge and right in your face. So on rainy days, I like installing because a lot of those get knocked out of the air. And this is not wanting to slide up underneath this molding. Uh, so then there's just less floating around and I feel like my work comes out cleaner. That also could be just like a mental thing that I tell myself that it comes out cleaner on rainy days. So I get over the depression of the rainy weather. Uh, it's just like a con uh, that's just like a common thing to tinning is just dealing with certain doors. It actually doesn't make the door any more complicated, any more difficult. I actually prefer installing open frame windows. Like if I had my preference, this is all I would ever tint all day, every day, because just like it's less because normally when you have a window that has a frame, the, a lot of the times the exterior molding, so the molding on the outside is smaller than the interior molding, so you have like a half inch to an inch of space that you can see from the outside of the vehicle that I can't reach with my hands to clean well. Like I do have tools to get back there, but the film can still get damaged when I'm trying to make it fit in those tight areas. And so it's just, they're, they're just a little bit more difficult in my opinion. You know, I'm gonna run out of things to talk about on the rest of the doors. And poor Alex, while he's editing this, is gonna be like, dude, does he ever shut up? Like, <laughs> but yeah, this, these doors are the exact same besides just this little point right here. <laughs> oh, Alex didn't put that in there. It looks stupid, I bet. I used to work in car dealerships and I would have to tint cars like as fast as I could. So I would like set up these rhythms and stuff because the car dealerships like don't care about what the quality of the work looks like. All they care is how fast it gets done. But I will never ever work for another car dealership again in my life. Like, that is not the way to live. It's exhausting and it's just not worth it. And especially like somebody like me, like I, I take I care so much. Like I keep all the doors shut in the shop. I actually get upset with everybody if there's too many people walking in and out while I'm working because every time that door opens, a gust of wind comes in and then that brings contaminants in from the outside. Then I'm dealing with more contaminants inside the shop. I also don't want any airflow in here. So there's no fans. Like I even turned the heater off 
just to tint this car to make it look as nice as possible. Because any time that there's like a fan going, that fan is kicking up dust and dirt that's been settled on the ground and then bringing that back into the air. And then that dust and dirt has the potential to get underneath my film. I wash every car before they come in. So that way I get all the dirt off of them, regardless how clean it is. You could have washed your car right before you brought it to me. I'm still gonna wash it again. But it is nice that we're gonna be putting out a video that's not a cyber truck. <laughs> Alex has been obsessed with doing cyber truck videos. I'm just talking, bro. I like, you're gonna think this is so stupid. Like some of the stuff I'm saying, I'm just like, there's a lot of stuff that you're gonna edit out. There's stuff you're not. So I'm just gonna keep going. Oh. All right, future Alex, that was just past Alex there. And you said you're gonna make me sound cool. So it's up to you, man. Like, so if I don't sound cool, everybody, it's not my bland personality. It's Alex's fault. <laughs> All right, that's another door done, woo! All right, and what I'm putting on right now is fabric softener. That just allows the film to kind of like float on the window once it's dry while I'm shrinking the outside. Cause like everybody knows film goes on the inside but you have to get it cut to shape and shrunk on the outside. Now it's time for the fun part. Let's get this back window done. So it takes a 60 inch roll to cover this back window. So I think it's at its widest, it's like 42, 43 inches. And it's like 60 something long. Woo. These are definitely like, these back windows are definitely higher level installs. A lot of guys who aren't as good will try to talk the customer into only doing half the window because the top half is already dark. But all that is is a little bit of privacy glass in there just to cut down on the sun coming in. It doesn't do anything for heat rejection, so it's best to tint the entire window. And if you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice I'm gonna leave it long here because what I'm doing is I'm gonna do what we call a pool shrink. So basically gonna form the film by pulling it and adding heat at the same time and it'll get it to shape to the shape of this glass there's other ways to shrink this but to me this is the easiest way and uh the fastest way all right and then you'll see as i'm pulling here i'm basically forming like the bubbles or the fingers as we call them like where i want them and then pulling the film just slightly to get them to shape as I want it to. That's one of the tricks behind these windows because they're so big. And all these ripples you see forming aren't a bad thing. It's just the way the film, like the excess air that's trapped in it. I'm gonna push all that out in a little bit. So through the power of editing, I got strawberry milk. Let's go. <laughs> All right, sorry to get the other half done. Now I gotta get this half done. This is gonna take, you know, a few minutes. time to install. Now everything in a perfect world is gonna be super, super clean in here, but I am just for funsies. Just gonna make sure that this is clean. Do one more pass over with the clay bar. Perfectly clean.
Tenors like to roll these from like bottom up, but I feel like that's harder. So I still roll mine sideways like you would a normal window. It's just a little bit bigger of a window. And then I get everything positioned where I want it. Up underneath all the trim, make sure there's no light gaps. The most important thing besides your contaminants on these is light gaps. And these are super easy to get light gaps because of the angle of the trim. Like I could be from this angle, not see anything, and then move my head to the other side of the car and be able to see right through the glass. Because there isn't like a true black border around these. This one has a little bit better than past Teslas do, but now this is the satisfying part. It's the part everybody likes watching, seeing everything finally disappear. The big rule of thumb when you're tinning is to squeeze you the way you install. But for situations like this, I usually get like a good tack down the middle. So this one, I actually had a little bit of an issue. So what I'm doing now, which this is totally out of the norm, but the film shifted on me when I first hit it with my squeegee. One thing that I'm always concerned about happening and as I squeegee it down, it tacks. So I have all this dry area right here. So I'm taking moisture from other parts of the window that I haven't squeegeed yet. And then bringing it back through where the dry area was. So I can prevent what we call, like, I mean, for lack of a better term, dry spots. So what a dry spot will be is right where like the adhesive goes or there will be air trapped in there and it'll leave little white smears and it'll be noticeable from the inside and the outside all because that film decided to shift right at the very beginning when i first hit it with my squeegee and then immediately tack afterwards i think i caught it early enough though to where i didn't have to repeal everything and respray it all and then that is a fully tinted Highlander Model 3. All right, and then that's fully done. That is basically how you tint a Highlander Model 3. It's the, almost the exact same as a regular one. There's not many differences when it comes to the class, actual window tint aspect of it. So, yeah, I guess keep up follows for some more and uh, we'll show you what the completed job looks like. Yeah.